Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Victor of Conception Films here, back with the Yu-Gi-Oh! video you've all been waiting for today, my Trap Tricks Anti-Meta Troll deck profile, so yeah, let's jump right in today. So this deck profile is going to be a really fun one. Uh, this is by far the best anti-meta deck I have ever built for just under $30, which is just insane because the deck actually works very well and very competitively. I'm going to have a link below that's going to uh, take you to some gameplay of me actually playing with the, this deck on Yu-Gi-Oh! Dev Pro uh, just to show you guys that this deck is competitive. Uh, now let's jump right into the deck. Today. Before we do start, uh, I'm going to give a brief summary of my deck. It's basically a troll slash anti meta slash burn slash lockdown deck, and it's actually very competitive to use. Um, so, yeah, let's jump right in. It's a Trap Tricks Gravekeeper's deck, and yeah. Alright, so first off, we have two Trap Tricks Mermello. Very essential for the deck. Its effect is very, very good. When it's summoned, you get a whole trap card to your hand, so that's an instant bottomless trap hole there, or any other whole trap card you want to run. Also, when it's sub special summoned, you can destroy a spell or trap card that your opponent controls, which is pretty cool. Next, we're going to run Trap Tricks Dionia. This is going to special summon your Trap Tricks cards from the graveyard, which is really nice to run. When you normal summon them, they automatically uh, special summon one Trap Tricks monster from your graveyard. Also, when it's special summoned, you get a whole trap card from your graveyard. So that's really cool to reuse your bottomless trap holes and your other whole trap cards. Next, we'll be running two Trap Tricks Nepenthes. have really high defense and a pretty good effect as well. For our last Trap Tricks card, we'll be running one Trap Tricks Atrax. It has pretty high attack, and its effect is also pretty cool. Next, we'll be running one Fossil Dyna Paca Cephalo, which is a really essential card for this deck. It's really, really good. If you look at its effect, neither player can special summon monsters. When this card is flipped face up, destroy all special summon monsters on the field. And even though its attack power isn't that high, we have lots of ways of preventing this monster from being attacked. So next we'll be running two Gravekeeper Spies. This is by far the best level 4 Gravekeeper we can run in this deck because its effect is when it's flipped face up you can special summon one Gravekeeper's monster with a 1500 or less attack from your deck and so automatically you get out two of these when you flip so yeah that's pretty cool for an automatic rank for Xyz. Next we'll be running one Summoner's Monk. Its effect is pretty good for getting out rank, uh, level 4s as well, to get out your rank 4s from your extra deck. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, run this, and uh, special summon a Fossil Dyna, and then basically your opponent can't do anything from there on if you have the right trap cards. Alright, next for our next level 4 monster we have Kagato Kage. Its effect is also really good. Uh, so uh, when you normal summon a level 4 monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Next we have a Malefic Stardust Dragon and you special summon this card by removing from play one Stardust Dragon from your extra deck. Now this may seem very random, but I have this in my deck for extra attack power and plus it doesn't take up another space in your deck because you remove from play one Stardust Dragon from your extra deck, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good because we're going to be running lots of field cards. Uh, next we have Santa Claus, which is, uh, believe me, this is actually a really great card for getting Quasar off the field or Cyber Dragon Infinity, which is which is actually pretty OP because they can't negate the, the tribute summon of this card if you use your opponent's monsters, which is really cool. Alright, so that's it for our monster cards. Put this to the side. For our spell cards, let's start out with our field cards. First we'll be running one Black Garden. This card is just insane. So every time a monster is summoned, except for flip summon, so basically when it's normal or special summoned, its attack is halved. And uh, the opposing player gets the special summon one level two, 800 attack, 800 defense token, which is just insane if you think about it. Because if you play this right, you could potentially be building up a token army. And yeah, it's basically the Shrekening from there. This is a really trolly card, and uh, yeah, you'll see it in play later if you click on my gameplay video. Next, we'll be running. 
to Necro Valleys. Now, Necro Valley is really essential for this deck because not only does it uh, boost the attack and defense of Gravekeeper's Spy, it also prevents your opponent from special summoning monsters from the graveyard, which is really, really trolly, and it shuts down lots of and it shuts down lots of decks. For example, Shadal and Centeller. So yeah, that's really nice. Run two of these, really good. Recommend it. All right, so next we'll be running two Terraforming. This is draw power for our field cards. We might not draw field cards on the first draw, so terraforming is really good. All right, next we'll be running one Dark Hole. You can run Regeki, but uh, I'm using Regeki in my other deck right now. Uh, also, Dark Hole is pretty useful for this deck because some monsters have pretty useful effects once they're sent to the graveyard, so that's another thing. You can run Regeki if you want, but Dark Hole is my preference, so yeah, that's our destruction card. Two Swords of Revealing Light for stalling time. This is really good for our specific deck because this is a lockdown deck slash troll deck, so a perfect card for that. You can run Gravity Bind if you want, but since most players like to use rank 4 Xyz nowadays, and Xyz cards aren't um, affected by Gravity Bind, I like to run Swords of Revealing Light. One Burden of the Mighty, great for trolling. Its effect is each face-up monster your opponent control loses 100 attack times its own level, which is just really good if you think about it. One Mystical Space Typhoon just for essential purposes. You can run uh, Night Beam if you want, but I like MST just so I can get rid of uh, continuous trap cards and continuous spell cards that are face-up on the field already. Uh, bottomless Trapple. <laughs> uh, we'll need this card for this deck because one, it gets rid of special summon monsters that are very strong really quickly and you're removing it from play. And two, the Trap Tricks cards get this card out on the field really easily, so we only need one and plus it's limited to one, so there's that. Two Trap Holes. Now a lot of players don't like running Trap Hole anymore because a lot of people special summon, but if you think about it, if you get Fossil Dino out in the field, nobody can special summon, which means that they have to normal summon to get out a card, and if they normal summon, you have Trap Hole to uh, get rid of those normal summon cards, which is pretty OP if you think about it, and then the opponent is basically locked down from then on. If you want to see some gameplay of that actually happening, uh, click the link below to watch the gameplay of my Trap Tricks deck. In actual play so uh, yeah I've said that a couple of times now so just go ahead and do that if you want next we have one trap tricks trap hole nightmare which is a really really um, good trap card its effect is when a monster that was special summoned this turn activate its effect on your opponent's side of the field negate that effect and if you do destroy that card pretty good uh, our last hole trap card is deep dark trap hole its effect is when a level 5 or higher effect monster is special summoned, banish that level 5 or higher effect monster. And this is basically our uh, backup for our bottomless trap hole. Alright, so next we have one Solemn Warning. This is a pretty good and trolly card. It negates the summoning of any monster, which is pretty cool. Essential too. Alright, so next we'll be running two Nightmare Wheel. And the reason I run this over Fiendish Chain is because Nightmare Wheel, although it doesn't negate the effect of the opponent's monster, it makes it so that it can't attack. And also, uh, on each of your standby phases, you, your opponent loses 500 life points, which is really cool considering this is also kind of a burn deck. So yeah, definitely run two Nightmare Wheel for extra defensive power. And next we have one Coffin Cellar, extra burn power. Each time a monster card is sent to your opponent's graveyard, inflict 300 damage to your opponent. I just think it's overall a really great card for this deck. Uh, for our next essential trap card, we'll run one Mirror Force for obvious reasons. One Scrap Iron Scarecrow. Uh, this card is pretty, uh, pretty a trolley card. Every time you use it, you set it face down instead of sending it to the graveyard. So that's extra defensive power. One Magic Cylinder for extra defensive power, and because it's a burn trap card and it deals lots of damage to your opponent if your opponent has a really high attack monster. So this is an essential card as well. One Wall of Disruption. Now a lot of people don't know about this card, but it's actually pretty good. Its effect is when an opponent's monster declares an attack, all attack position monsters your opponent controls lose 800 attack for each monster they control. So let me kind of explain this card. If your opponent has three attack position monsters and one of them attacks, I can activate this card and each of those attack position monsters will lose 2400 attack because that's 800 times three. Well, that's really just insanely powerful. So. So yeah, definitely run this. It's kind of an alternative to Mirror Force, and it's pretty trolly too. One compulsory evacuation device, uh, pretty essential trap card, and two ceasefire for uh, 
extra burn power. It's also just a really good trap card. If you have two of these and say your opponent has three monsters and you have three monsters, that's a total of six monsters on the field and times 500, that'd be 3,000. So then if I activate both of these at the same time, your opponent loses 6,000 life points. That's a lot. So yeah, that's it for our main deck. So yeah, a lot of people get confused when I show them my deck profile. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I completely understand that, but if you actually try the deck, it's actually not bad and it's quite competitive. So looking at the extra deck, uh, basically just run any rank 4 XDs you want to run, but the two essential rank 4 XDs I'm going to talk about today is Lavalval Chain and number 101 Silent Honor Arc. This card, Silent Honor Arc, is just... It's just really good. And Lavalva Chain, that's to get out your um, Fossil Dyna to put on top of your deck. And also, it's just pretty good for milling if you want to mill as well. And number 101, Silent Honor Arc, it has a really broken effect. And I think it's just overall a really great defensive rank 4 XEs to run. Next, we have uh, number 50, Black Ship of Corn. Pretty good effect. You deal 1,000 damage. Um, basically every turn if your opponent has a monster with less attack. And uh, next, number 55, Go 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 Life. This is a temporary rank 4 X, I don't know if I'm going to keep it in my deck, but it has a pretty good effect. Um, next we have one, number 39, Utopia, essential rank 4 Xyz card for any deck. So yeah, and then next for our final extra deck card we have Stardust Dragon, and this is just so that we can summon uh, Malefic Stardust Dragon, and that's actually pretty cool because we, it's true that we won't get this out ever because we don't have any tuners, but Malefic Stardust Dragon, if you draw this and you have a field card on the field, which is very likely, uh, you automatically get this basically because there's no way we're going to be using Stardust Dragon and it doesn't take any space in our deck, so yeah, it's not burdensome and it helps your deck, I guess. Alright, so that's our extra deck. I'm going to add a... Uh, Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon once the Mega 10 comes out for that. I don't have the funds to buy the current copy of, uh, of Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon because it hasn't been reprinted yet. But yeah, this extra deck is pretty flexible, so however you guys want to play it, just have a bunch of rank 4 uh, Xyz cards. Lavalval Chain and number 101, Essential. So yeah guys, that's my Trap Tricks Gravekeepers 2015 Anti-Meta Troll deck profile today, and it's actually pretty cool. If you have any recommendations or suggestions to help improve this deck, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you like this deck and you want to see gameplay of this deck actually in play, uh, just click the link I have provided down below that's going to um, bring you to the gameplay video that I provided as well. And uh, yeah, this has been Victor of Conception Films. The long-awaited Trap Tricks deck has been covered. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to slap the thumbs up button. I know I'm going to sound like a broken record, but this is by far the greatest anti-meta deck I've ever built because... Consider this, I built this under $30, so that's basically an extreme budget deck. I mean, I built this deck by buying a couple of packs of premium gold, and then I used a couple of cards I found lying around, so I basically randomly slapped together a bunch of cards to create this beauty. This, this beauty. No, yeah, but this is actually quite a competitive deck. Uh, be sure to watch the gameplay, commentary, click on the link down below. I'll see you guys on the flippity flip.